After many months of work, thousands and thousands of rounds fired in both accuracy testing and tactical drills, dudes, world, team peers, I think I'm finally ready to do my tabletop review on the outstanding Arsenal SGL-21, SGL-31 series of AK variant rifles. They are what I consider to be, at least as of 2010, the gold standard for AKs. Hit. Hit. Nothing fancy, that is a bold statement. Gold standard? Yeah, I really think so. In terms of value, adherence to Russian technology, attention to detail, um, second type of cool, which I'll mention here in a second, Arsenal gets it right in the SGL series of rifles. I may discuss maybe some of the other siblings, SLR 107 perhaps, but the concentration will be on the SGL 21 and 31 rifles. And I will tell you, this is the AK that got me off the fence. And forever, like, I mean forever, going all the way back to the 80s, I was on the fence. That no AK really motivated me to the level to get one. Yeah, they're kind of cool. I shot a Bulgarian with blonde wood on it back in the 80s, which I really loved. But still, it had a Warsaw Pack length stock that didn't fit me. And I was like, eh, that's cool. And actually, back then, I was so poor, I couldn't have got it anyhow. But as years went on, I saw others, and they just didn't motivate me. Fast forward, January 2010, SHOT Show with Walker English, looking directly at an AK that is getting it right, motivates me, okay? And no, it's not externally motivated. It comes from me. It just connected with me, got me off the fence, and when I saw it in person, and I saw the quality, attention detail, all that stuff, I wanted one for my own systems, and I wanted to confirm if it was good as they say it is. Walker in the booth review, 
very forthcoming. He's like, hey, this is the number one AK in the world. This is why. And he went down the line. I thought he made a great case. He is very well spoken. He knows his product. That's all great and good. I have to confirm it for myself. That's why it's taken me six months to do this review, dudes. Six months of hard work. Again, thousands of rounds shot. Let's cover some ground rules on how this review will go. First off, none fancy. Is it going to be single part, two part, three parts, what? I don't know. It's hard to say. There's lots of information to convey. I'd really like it to be a single part. Never do I want to gratuitously throw out a bunch of videos. I think that's nonsense. It doesn't serve my subscribership well. What serves them is information that is honest and absolutely independent. And by the way, that is me. No one influences what I say. Not Arsenal, not my viewers, nobody. I'm not trying to please or impress anybody. I'm trying to take care of my subscri subscribership. People who come to the Net and Fancy Project for the real deal, and that's what you get with me. Okay, so that takes time. I would love to do it in a single part. Just don't know. We'll see how that plays out. Um, purity of data. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, I don't use other people's data points for this review. In other words, there's probably a lot of information in magazine form, maybe in the forums about the Arsenal SGL rifles. I don't know. I don't really look um, because I want to kind of keep some purity. In other words, an original take. And honestly, I generate my own data in TMP. My crew members and I, PFI dude, myself going out shooting these rifles, sadly missing. Dudes, we get enough data. We can tell you just from our own shooting about the accuracy, the reliability, the system integrations, the ergonomics, the materials, the quality, the firepower, weight, balance, feel. Huh. All the stuff I'm going to attempt to go down the talking points in this video, slash videos. Right here, baby. Uh, and yeah, I'll be thorough. Do the kind of information I would like to get as best I can. Um, there's a lot of other foundational videos already out by me in the Net and Fancy Project since early this year talking about these guns. In fact, they have already sold a lot of Arsenal SGLs from those videos. Uh, let's see, Trial by Fire, running the SGL 21 in the Sledgehammer. I'll annotate these. You can check that out. Again, the Nut and Fancy Shot Show 2010 Arsenal booth visit. A lot of information there. How about winning odds when we were hosted by Arsenal down there in uh, April 2010? Great times with Walker English shooting their AKs, um, the SGLs, SLRs, and the RPK. Good times. Foundational because it shows the shooting and how we arrived. Also, don't forget Sledgehammer Introduction Part 1 where I ran this gun. Arsenal SGL 31 in the sledgehammer. We'll talk about that as we progress. Okay, that's a ground rule. Uh, another ground rule. Some guys may roll into the Nut and Fancy Project and say, dude, you're an AAR guy. You can't review AKs, thinking that they somehow own the AK topic. That's a bunch of bull crap. I can review any gun I want, and at this point, I feel just as confident with an AK platform as I do any other platform. AR, Mini 14, SU-16. If you don't believe me, go look at the hours of video already out of us running, me running, this gun tactically. Not the fastest, not the most accurate, but I feel confident on medium skill, at least enough to give you an honest product review, generate good data for you. Um, and along those lines, there might be some AK elitists that might be upset that I say that this is a gold standard. And they'll go, nothing fancy, there's a lot of other AKs out there. Dudes, I know that. I know Arsenal is not the only game in town. I know they're not the only builder of what are pretty reliable and accurate AKs. I know that. Um, but I'm talking price, value, capabilities. Arsenal has a formula that attracted me personally that I think warrants your attention. That's not to say that in the future I won't recommend other AKs. I won't review other AKs. I sure ain't going to promise it though. I just don't know. It depends on what moves me, what, you know, what I dig. Uh, we'll talk about value, and that's going to be a really critical deciding factor for a lot of people in the market uh, as we progress here. Let's see, another ground rule. I already talked about independence. No one's controlling what I say. I'm pretty much everything I'm going to say on the Arsenal line is positive. You know, some guys say, well, you know, you're just a commercial for Arsenal. Well, no, I'm not. Um, you know, I'll say good things and bad things about all the manufacturers. If you don't believe me, go spend a couple days in the Nut and Fancy Project watching my videos. You will see just that. Even on, you know, very favored manufacturers like Tapco. Huh. Let's get going. <laughs> Philosophy of use. Man, there's a lot to cover. Short time to get there. First and foremost, as you can see as it's labeled, I consider the Arsenal SGL 21, which, by the way, is chambered in 762 by 39 this round right here, or the SGL 31 in the background chambered by, or chambered in 545 
by 39.5 millimeter to be tactical carbines. Defensive slash offensive carbines, depending on what you have going on that day, depending on who you are and what your role is. Let's talk about without rule of law. Great options. Okay, this would be a homestead defense gun. To defend home and family with, you bet. Totally. Rural police officer. If your department allows it, would this be a good choice? I think so. And as I will talk about later, I highly recommend an optics use with it for maximum accuracy. However, great choice with that. Uh, defensive carbine, stuff I've talked about in other reviews, no doubt. Another one that I think Arsenal achieves by their t attention to detail, by their quality levels, is a collectible. Okay, in a lot of ways, this is a semi-automatic version of a Russian AK. In this case, an AK-47 in the background, perhaps the AK-74N as in November. Granted, this has some Tapco furniture on it. You know, Walker's probably freaking out about that. We'll get to that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a semi-automatic civilian legal AK-74. November, you know, in. And by the way, I got four SGLs here. It's a very narrow field of view in the viewfinder, and I apologize for that. We'll talk about some others as we go along here as best I can. But they are collectible in the sense that they adhere to Russian military technology. And by the way, I had to learn that. That's kind of how it's said. In other words, there is a approved military way of putting together an AK. Arsenal adheres to that. In fact, they preach about it. And if you don't believe me, uh, you know, go talk to those folks in, down there in Las Vegas Arsenal. And they're huge on it. And that's what differentiates them against all the other AK manufacturers out there. Or maybe I should say importers out there. Okay, collectible. And if you really want to juice it up, collectability-wise, you might dial into one of their Jubilee series. Which saw at the 2210 SHOT Show booth review, and also we went down there and visited with Ar Arsenal in April. Good-looking AKs commemorating the AK-74. Nice guns. So that is philosophy of use. I may have forgotten a thing here or there, and yes, that may continue as review progresses. Before we go any further, let me refer you to another Nut and Fancy foundational video. Two kinds of cool. Important to understand in this Arsenal review because a lot of guys get those mixed up. They think first type of cool is second, second type of cool is first, and all that stuff. First type of cool just means capability and role. That's what these Nut and Fancy talking points about all my testing standards are designed to reveal. What I attempt to convey to you right now. You know, how accurate is it? You know, what's the weight? What's the ergonomics? Second type of cool is intrinsic enjoyment it provides to the user. Some guys will probably connect, not probably, I know they will connect with the Arsenal product because it is such a close and accurate representation of the Russian AK-47s, the Russian AK-74s. And that is second type of cool. Off limits for criticism if you ask me. Okay, and others may feel the same way about a different brand of AK. Just understand it. If a guy says second type of cool, I love it because of that. Off limits. You can't criticize it. Okay, that's why I spent time making that video a while back. Foundational. All right, innovation and design. First off, dudes, these Arsenal guns are produced in the motherland. Russia, baby. I mean, does it get any better than that? Ishmash factory. Hope I say all these words right. City of Ishvesk, Utmurt Republic, Russia. A Russian-made AK variant rifle. And no, they don't look like this when they come into the United States. They are imported in the Sega Sporting version. Now, I don't have a Sega 223. I do have a Sega 308 on loan in the Nut and Fancy Project. And it is a fair representation of how the guns come into the U.S. You can see they are sporting in nature in order to be legally imported. Notice the neutered front sight, no bayonet lug, non-AK gas block, okay, different handguard, 300 meter sight, no safety detents, no mag weld uh, dimples, different trigger guard, rear mounted trigger for the sporting stock, and there's other variances too. That's how they come into the country, as a sporting Sega. What Arsenal does is remanufactures these guns into the current Russian military specifications sans full automatic capability, which if you ask me, doesn't matter worth a crap. I think semi-automatic fire, as I said in winning odds, shooting the AKs down there in Vegas, 
is overrated. Semi-auto semi fire is fine. So you have pretty much a brand new AK rifle. And this drives to the point why I love the Arsenal product so much. Let me turn you on to this gun, which I have taken down on loan for this review. I told you I had four of these things. Here comes an SGL 31 in black. And I think that's SGL 3171, NATO length, that is US length stock in black. When you look inside an Arsenal rifle, what you see are new components. You don't see any checkered barrels that have been remounted out of other receivers. You see a new barrel trunnion. You don't see any cosmoline packed up. You don't see any rust. You don't see any corrosion. What you see is an absolutely new rifle, finished off to Russian military specification. Second type of cool. That is cool. Okay, uh, let's go down the line. First up, AK-74 muzzle brake. And by the way, that totally works totally works. I am surprised at how effective it is. Bayonet lug on the AK-74 style of uh, front sight base. If you get the SGL 21 or 31, you also have an accessory lug and that was used or is used in the Russian military to attach a 40 millimeter grenade launcher like the BG-15, GP-25 or some of its successors. 90 degree gas block with vent holes. Chrome lined cold hammer forged barrel, cleaning rod, stainless steel heat shield inside the polymer front, uh, front hand grip. Nice, 1,000 meter sight. Magazine weld dimples. Bullet guide installed. Again, the Segas don't have all this. Arsenal does all this down in Las Vegas and creates basically a new rifle. Side mounted optics rail. X and Y pattern reinforcements in the receiver. Nice. Military specification trigger guard. Magazine release. Trigger, I'm not trigger, but safety lever dimple right there that catches it. Longitudinal groove as per AK-74 specification. Okay, there's your trap door for the cleaning kit. Swivels installed, front and rear. That's not a swivel, but that's a sling attachment point. What it is, in this case, the 545 by 39 is an AK-74 rifle, remanufactured, brand new. This is one of the things that got me off the fence. Every time I looked at an AK, I would look inside and I would see a gun that looked used. It looked abused. Not the, uh, the Arsenal products. And check this out. Since we're talking about how new it is, all the components are matched with an ar Arsenal and they're unused. Notice this, there's that bolt right in the bolt carrier. What is it, numbered 856? Guess what, the bolt carrier number is 856. Break open some of those other imported AK variant rifles and tell me if you see that. You probably see mismatched numbers, and yes, they sometimes will function, sometimes they won't, because AK being a loose tolerance weapon is forgiving of tolerance differences. For me, again, here we go, second type of cool, this is what I want to see. This is what turns me on. Adherence to quality, adherence to the Russian technology, I love that. Second type of cool, yes, it can function without it. See what I'm talking about, why I had to say that video, the two types of cool? I dig it. The arsenal just gets it right. Still looking at the SGL-31. Uh, by the way, more Russian uh, military specification. There's no additional opening forward of the magazine well in the SGLs. One millimeter stamped receiver. Some guys will say nothing fancy. Do you prefer stamped or milled? Well, having fired these SGL, SGLs thousands of rounds and seeing how accurate they are, I really don't see a need other than second type of cool to have a stamped receiver. You're going to add a lot of weight and you're going to add a lot of cost. I'll stick with a stamped. Thank you very much. How about one millimeter versus 1.5 like the Mac 90s have? Would you have a preference on that? Well, if you were to ask me six months ago, I'd probably say, yeah, we'll take a thicker receiver. Again, having seen the performance firsthand of how these arsenals perform, this is fine. And again, it's Russian military spec. If there was a problem with it, I'm kind of thinking they would have changed it. And they haven't. Great. 
This, by the way, is a proprietary arsenal trigger. US designed, it counts towards 922R compliancy. That is making your gun legal for pistol grip, affixing, you know, normal capacity magazines, all that stuff. You can look it up, I'm not gonna waste air time on it. This is a nice trigger. Okay, it's two stage. It's not a match trigger, don't get me wrong, but it's clean, it's crisp, there's no slap, and it's forged. And they did a great job. Um, I'll talk about some other options when we get to accessories, but great job on the trigger also in the Arsenal SGL. Still talking about innovation design, also bleeding over to the talking point, materials and quality. An integrated optics rail, another thing that got me off the fence as far as AKs go. Um, the AK sight, like I said in my AK-47 versus AR-15 series of videos, is okay, has a very short length to it. In other words, a short, short radius. It works fine, but I do not prefer it. For maximum accuracy and especially for target identification, night capabilities, I want the ability to mount an optic. It's included in the SGL 21 and 31 and you don't have to do it. Yes, you can mount optics rails on your AKs. From my understanding, it is quite the hassle to do because you have to make sure alignment is just so, you have to affix it just so. For me, I'd rather have it included per factory, in this case, Russian military specification, optics rail. Awesome job, and it's pretty much how I run all the SGLs you see in the Nut and Fancy project. Let me go back to the muzzle brake. Um, and I may talk about this in a separate video. Great muzzle brake, however, it is not chrome lined. Barrel is, muzzle brake not chrome lined, neither is the gas tube. If you shoot corrosive ammo, and again, I'm kind of jumping ahead in the talking points to field strip and maintenance, you have to thoroughly clean these devices, otherwise you're going to get all kinds of rust. Keep that in mind. I asked uh, Arsenal, I said, dudes, why aren't you chrome, chrome lining this? And the gas tube. The answer is, like it normally is, cost. If we chrome line it with a matte chrome finish, it's going to add a lot of cost to it. And basically what, be, what was, and I'm ballparking this, a $700 rifle, becomes a $900 rifle. And again, I don't know the exact cost, but there you have it. Some guys may also criticize the Arsenal saying, hey man, you know, why aren't you parkerizing your guns? Kind of like, I don't know, I think the Polish Tantals, aren't those parkerized? Uh, cost is one reason. Again, it will add cost. Uh, two, if I'm not mistaken, I think the AK-74N is also black enamel coated. Okay, so, and actually it's pretty durable. Arsenal makes a point of making sure you don't get certain solvents on there that will take that black enamel off. If you have an issue with the coloration, I say Duracoat it, baby. Make it whatever color you want. But if I was to take a pick, hey, you want to park rise it and add another $200? Uh, even though park rising, in my opinion, doesn't add a lot of cost, um, whatever coating, uh, I'll just take it like it is. Uh, if we look at the SGL 31, Actually, let me show you this 21 that we've shot a lot in the project. Outfitted with Tapco stuff, I'll show you this as it progresses. Okay, and you can see the finish wear is pretty darn good. This one's been thrashed, hundreds and hundreds of rounds shot through it. The finish is lasting pretty good. If it gets banged up a little bit, kind of like that flash suppressor there, or actually the muzzle brake, uh, I don't really care. To me, it's a badge of honor. Okay, so that's the finish on the Arsenals. I think it's adequate. Is it the best in the world? Nope, it's not. Here's the Arsenal SGL 31 shot in the Nut and Fancy Project like a lot. Look at the barrel thickness. Uh, I think I mentioned this in my AK-47 versus AR-15 series of videos, and I call it an issue. It's less of an issue with me now because I know how the guns perform with it. And I'm talking both extended firing as well. Um, I still would prefer to have a thicker barrel, but I'm thinking again, like I said previously, if the Russians found it to be a problem, they probably would have changed it. In the 545 chambering, I think the barrel thickness is just fine. When you go to the 30 caliber bullet in the 762 by 39 SGL 21, same barrel thickness. So it's going to be thinner still just because you have a bigger hole in the barrel. Uh, big issue for me now? Nope, not really. I would prefer to have it thicker. On the upside, when we get to weight, it does make a much lighter gun. Uh, and in, proven, in my shooting, I've proved it to be very accurate as is. Okay, to wrap up materials and quality, these are Russian AKs. 
In this case, an AK-47 variant. If you go with a 31 AK-74 variant, along the lines of AK-74, in as in November. By the way, this is an SGL-20. The variants being that it has a milled-off accessory lug underneath the gas block. So it cannot accept a grenade launcher. whoop de doo don't care. It does have the bayonet lug. We'll talk about that under accessories. Basically, Russian AKs, military spec, doesn't get much better. At least if it does, I ain't seen it. Moving on into talking points, this will go quickly. This part, reliability and durability. Absolutely superb. Not one single jam in all the thousands of rounds shot here in the Nut and Fancy project. The durability from all indications is that it is a lifetime rifle. Incidentally, you're looking at the 76239 dressed out as per my preferences. Your mileage may vary. We'll talk about these accessories, but look how sick that looks, mismatched. It's got the flat desert earth T6 Tapco rail, the saw grip, Bulgarian circle 10 and OD, and the plum colored furniture forend, wearing the cork 47s, or the cork turbo 123. <laughs> nice, I think that looks cool. Weaver two by seven scope as well. Um, reliability, durability, uh, on par with any other AK. Actually a little bit better. Uh, some guys in AK enthusiasts will find this video and they'll go, well, all AKs are reliable. They're all good. Uh, maybe, maybe not, dudes. Uh, it depends on how they're manufactured. A lot of the AKs out there are not uh, put together from new parts like these arsenals are. They are slapped together from used parts, including used barrels that are press fit uh, contrary to technology into the barrel trunnion. Okay, and then they mix match the bolt, the bolt carrier, and all the trigger parts. In some cases, you may get, you know, unexpected fully automatic fire out of some AKs. And yes, I have it from very good sources that has happened, from big names I won't mention, um, because the parts are so loosely fitted and they're crappy. And yes, this one has a Tapco G2 trigger in there. Don't tell Walker. It'll be our little secret. I'll get to that in accessories. Uh, absolutely awesome. Reliability, durability. Enough said. I mean, really. It's an arsenal. It is a Russian AK. That's all I can say. On to accuracy. There's lots to discuss with this. Next talking point. That's one reason it took me so long to get to this review. Let me see how quick I can go. I'm going to start off with SGL 21, represented on the counter. Uh, by the way, this one has not been fired. It's new. It's on loan in that fancy project just because it doesn't have a scope on it and it represents the plain Jane AK as it comes are the Arsenal SGL 21s that comes out the box, which I wanted for vis visual representation. At 100 yards, this is what I was getting with SGL 21 initially. Yabachi went with me. He got this one. This is uh, from the bench, 100 yards. He has his own SGL. That's the group he got. About five and a half M away. Kind of sucky. Brown Bear, 125 grain hollow point. This is me. Five M away. Kind of sucky. Guess what though? This is when the gun was wearing the Midwest Industries rail, which clamps directly to the barrel, which I think changes the barrel harmonics. Huh, keep that in mind, it might become a player. Here we go, more targets, SGL 21. This is Yabachi's without a rail. That's a pretty good group, 2.5 MOA. There's his, 3 MOA right there. There's mine, 4 MOA. 3 MOA from me, and again, these are ballpark MOAs. This is an AK, it's not a bench rifle. Bocce, 4 MOA. SGL 21, Wolf Ammo, this is all me. This is wearing the rail. Actually, I gotta be honest with you, not too impressed with it. I came away actually kind of bummed with it. Like, dudes, I'm not too happy with that result. And this is really taking my time. Again, wearing the Midwest Industries rail. Wolf Ammo, 100 yards. And guys say, why are you shooting Wolf? Well, it's a Russian gun. It's To me, it's kind of meant for Russian ammo. It's designed to shoot this stuff, 122 grain, full metal jacket. This is good ammo. Why not? It's a Russian gun shooting Russian ammo. It's representative of what guys will feed through it. I hate it when other places put really expensive ammo through their guns because it's comp to them. It's given to them. Other guys can't afford that ammo. So, oh, this is actually a good group. Okay, okay, okay. It's another one, SGL 21 still, 100 yards. Yeah, we did lots of shooting, lots of shooting. It seems this was the trend. I'd have a flyer that opened up the group, high right flyer, and that's taking my time with trigger pulls. It's another group there, SGL 21, kind of unimpressive groups. And then I said, you know, I need to take that rail off to do the gun justice, because right now I'm gonna call it a three to four MOA gun. And that's if you're really taking your time, you're, you have great stability, great, great trigger pull. 
Fast forward to July 2010. This was just uh, yesterday, in fact. Rail off, taking my time. These are the best groups I got with the SGL21. Again, this is off the bench testing. Kind of a high right flyer. Nice group here. I'll call that about sub 2, M 2 MOA. Again, Wolf Ammo. Wearing the Tapco G2 Trigger, actually. That'll be our little secret. And the Tapco T6 Stock out of the SGL21. Nice group there, nice group there. SGL21, therefore, I will proclaim to be about a 2 to 3 MOA gun. Okay, that's this one again right here, proven in my own shooting. That's bench results, and kind of like some other rifles, perhaps not too impressive off the bench. Um, depending on what you define impressive. To me, for an AK, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. In 76239, which I don't think is a super accurate cartridge anyhow. Okay? So, not too bad.